Jimmy Ray, get to the set. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> hey, sorry, Steve. Uh, hey, you guys know, uh, as like I do, that uh, time is important, right? Uh, people are dependent on us. And when it comes to time, really, that's one of the more important aspects of designing a network is using NTP, Network Time Protocol. Really, really important stuff. But what is it, right? What is NTP? How do we actually set it up? How do we configure it? How do we know that it's accurate, right? Well, let's take a look at the, at the, at the TechWise TV whiteboard here. A couple things about NTP. NTP uh, uses an atomic clock um, to actually sync up and grab its time source from. Now, atomic time is really pretty groovy, right? Because what you're looking at here is that we're, we're actually basing time uh, based upon the calculation of one second. Now, as simple as that sounds, um, calculating a second has been up for so much debate. I mean, you just couldn't even imagine. I mean, it's been a solar day, a sidereal day, um, all kinds of really intense discussions about this that we finally decided that actually back in the 50s, they said, you know, why don't we use atomic clocks and find the right elements to actually keep time because they keep a nice, you know, rhythm in there. But if you look at the periodic table, there's so many, which one are you going to use? Well, we actually use uh, an atom called, and I'm going to try to write this upside down, I'm going to turn this table just a touch, called cesium. Uh, cesium, I'm, ho I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this correctly. probably have a lot of chemical guys going, uh, that's not how you pronounce that, Goober. Uh, but cesium-133. And so what we say is one atomic second, or one second, is actually equal to, now, let's see if I'm going to get this number right, check my math, 9,192,000,000. 631,770 oscillations. Look, I almost ran off the screen, right? So it's 70 oscillations going back and forth of an electron uh, in the outer valence. So if we look at what cesium-133 is, so I'll just put a C. All right, 133 here. Cesium, cesium itself, man, that's a, that's a very odd element, right? Um, it has actually, uh, and I won't draw just for simplicity's sake, um, the whole thing, but it has 55 electrons uh, in its uh, outer valence here. And what we do is, now where do we get that number, right? That one bill, that, that, that nine billion number, that's a big number. What, out of all the numbers, why pick that one? Well, what we noticed about cesium is that um, the outer valence here is uh, enormous, it kind of very long, it, it's got a very long elongated orbit uh, from the rest of them. So you have all the little cesium here, all the little, uh, 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 electrons kind of doing their little, you know, cool, you know, staying close thing. The outer valence, the 55th electron, actually stays way outside of here. So what we do is, is that we're measuring the distance between this valence and this closest uh, valence here between uh, the nucleus of the cesium-133 element. What it equates to is a radio frequency of, of course, 9 billion, 192,631,000, I'll use another line, 770. That's what this RF frequency is what it oscillates at. So we notice that when we make these many oscillations here in this outer valence, that is going to equal one second. And how accurate is this? Man, I'm telling you what, atomic clocks are phenomenally accurate. They are so accurate that back in 31 December of, uh, was it 83 or 90? Anyway, back in, like, I think it's the 80s, um, we actually had to bump uh, the, all the atomic clocks all over the world up a second because the Earth was actually slowing down. Um, so they kept really good time, and we had to adjust that out so we'd make sure that, you probably noticed for 100,000 years and stuff, but we notice it because the Earth slows down, we go ahead and adjust the clocks uh, to match that. So are these accurate? Oh, you better believe it. They are mega, mega, mega accurate. So now that we established the credibility, what is it that we do to actually make this work from a networking standpoint? Well, our atomic clocks, as they set up here, change the pin color here, what do you say? This is my clock. These all set at certain levels of accuracy, right, of dependability. And so we call this, this level of dependability, we call it stratum. Um, so see if I can spell it right, stratum. A, an atomic clock is actually stratum zero. It's the source, it's where everything lives. As you start pulling time from these, your very next source that you're coming down through here is, of course, 
a stratum one clock. And so when you see time servers listed, they'll tell you their accuracy, their reliability based upon a strata number. Stratum zero is, is, is the clock itself. If you're stratum one, you're connecting directly to the source. Really, really groovy stuff, right? If you're stratum, obviously, if you're below that, then you're obviously two and below. When you get past stratum 16, these are actually considered unaccurate. Um, so you never want to go past stratum 16 uh, on anything. Um, that's where you start losing uh, your accuracy in here. Again, very small, but still it's a recommended guideline is to not be in here. Typically on your devices, when you're set syncing up, you're going to want to be at one or two. Now, how do you use this in your network? Well, uh, when you're setting up your network, and please, my goodness, man, one of the things that I like to do is talk about all the mistakes I've made in 25 plus years of networking is never, ever, ever, ever use a single time source. When you're setting up your core devices, your main entry points in the network that you want to actually bring that stratum time down from a stratum one or a stratum zero host, uh, you actually want to make sure that you set up at least three, at least three time sources from three independent places that are serving atomic time out there. If you set one and that has a networking problem, a failure, whatever, you can be in trouble. I've had logs get out of sync, all kinds of other networking problems. Uh, we were working at a carrier one time and uh, we actually got our clocks out of sync uh, because we had a network blip and it actually caused some billing issues. So you, you just can't, you just don't want seconds on that, right? So have a couple in here. Cisco makes it pretty darn easy uh, when you're setting up network time uh, because our commands are pretty simple. It's just NTP, uh, server, and then whatever your server is. Um, uh, it's that simple of a command. I mean, you know, we, we make it pretty easy. It's not like, you know, you have to know all this good stuff. But um, the, 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 the important piece about this is make sure absolutely positively that you set this up and you configure at least three sources that we support this with. Now, I would not be a good uh, Navy man if I didn't tell you that our atomic clocks, our actual source, actually comes from the United States Naval Observatory. Um, that's the official timekeeper of the United States and therefore the best. Um, so uh, that's where uh, we, we actually sync this stuff up to and make this run. And you can find uh, a lot of really great atomic servers. If you look, let me go ahead and bring up a website here. This is the NIST Internet Time Service and it's gonna tell you, uh, this is up to date all the time. Um, you can actually find it at uh, tf.nist.gov and it's going to tell you, it's going to have all the little stuff in here, uh, but it's going to actually give you great information on what the servers look like. So I'm going to bring this down here. Now you can see that on this page here, it's telling you actually the, the, the name of the server, the address, where it's located at, and any status that it's currently having. See, this is why you set more than one. You find these out, you set these up, you can figure these are saying they're busy, these are saying they're available. Check this one out. This one's saying here, that actually works over IPv6. So they keep all that stuff up to date uh, so that you know that you're using the right time source for the right thing, and then all your uh, devices are up to date and ready to go. I tell you what, beyond a shadow of a doubt, when I design any network, whether it's from scratch, whether it's to go in and, and actually do an assessment, there are two things that I absolutely positively do. I make sure I got a syslog server set up, and I make sure I got network time set up. Easy to understand. Incredibly accurate as we've shown, and TechWise TV approved.